It's called Gould squid, but is more commonly known as the arrow squid because of its sleek shape and triangular tail fins. It's really a mollusk, a ferocious predator which hunts in large schools and moves through the sea at tremendous speed by jetting water. The ten powerful tentacles sprouting from its head are well equipped to envelop and capture prey, while the sharp beak-like mouth tears the living flesh apart. In Asia and around the Mediterranean, the squid is a delicacy, but up until recently it only had nuisance value for Tasmanian fishermen. The walrus is part of a Japanese-Australian venture to explore the potential of squid harvesting off the Tasmanian coast. It's more than a boat, it's really a floating automatic fishing platform. While the rows of glaring lights attract the squid, the revolving elliptical drums lower lines catch the fish, pull them in, release them into containing troughs and repeat the process over and over until the holds are full or the school moves on. Tonight's catch, processed and packaged in Tasmania, will be worth nearly $2 a kilogram on the international market. Tasmania's history has always been closely linked with the sea. Early in the 19th century, large herds of black right whales made Hobart a centre for the whaling fleets of the world. These and other whales, once bred in the sheltered bays and river estuaries, and fur seals in the thousands are still found on the rocky islands of Bass Strait. The deep clear waters around the rugged coast are also a breeding ground for innumerable shoals of jack mackerel and anchovy, and these in turn attract superb sporting and fighting surface fish. Here you find bluefin tuna, kingfish, the seagoing Australian salmon, skipjack, sleek barracuda and the occasional marlin. These fish are still caught in the traditional way with a line and lure trolled behind the boat. It's a form of fishing where you trust to luck and take your chances. But more and more sophisticated equipment like radar, sonar and echo sounders are turning the art of fishing into a precise science. On the Tacoma, skipper Wayne Baker is using all these devices to position his trawler directly over one of Tasmania's limited trawling grounds. The skipper uses the Danish Seine method of trawling to sweep several hectares of smooth sandy floor. Two to three kilometres of heavy ropes called sweeps are laid on the trawling ground to set the net. When trawling begins, the movement of the sweeps across the sea floor creates clouds of sand which send the fish scurrying towards the open jaws of the net. In one trawl shot, up to two tons of fish can be caught. These include flounder, flathead, latchet, gurnet and school sharks. Twenty kilometres further out, they're drop line fishing in depths between 300 and 700 metres. 
About 30 baited hooks are clipped to each line and the lines are lowered down over the edge of the continental shelf into the cold, surging waters of the Great Southern Ocean. George Muir, skipper of the Millicent, is after the deep sea fishes like cod, traveller and ling. These fish weigh up to 20 kilograms and are fast gaining a reputation as an excellent table fish. The Millicent is a high powered boat that can make the journey out to the edge of the continental shelf in a little over an hour. Boats like this are only beginning to discover the resources of the area and they're also catching species such as blue grenadier and gemfish. Few schools are thought to exist below a thousand metres, but surface migrating pelagic schools are known to extend far out beyond the continental shelf. In 1978-79, the trawler Zeon was hired by the Australian and Tasmanian governments to do a comprehensive fishery survey of the waters off Tasmania's west coast. The survey included plotting the trawling grounds and collecting fish for biological research. Small ear bones called otoliths removed from the heads of a wide variety of fish species allowed biologists to judge their age. Fish were also weighed, measured and labelled for further analysis. The trawler also explored the sea bottom for new trawling grounds and previously unknown stocks of fish. In the process, it discovered much untrawlable seabed, but in one area, in 300 fathoms of water, it did discover large schools of deep sea dory. On the mainland, dory have long been popular in seafood restaurants for the texture of its flesh and its fine flavour, yet until now it was considered a rare fish in Tasmanian waters. More surveys are planned for Tasmanian coastal waters. But Tasmanians, like most Australians, are only beginning to appreciate the wide variety of edible sea life that exists in our waters. The giant deep sea crab is often thrown back when found entangled in fishing nets or captured in cray pots. Yet, besides being among the largest and heaviest crabs in the world, its meat is sweet and succulent. Slowly our attitudes are changing. The Derwent Hunter, an old two-masted schooner, has recently been converted into a modern fishing boat, complete with refrigerated holds. Fish like Traveller and Ling caught from this boat are cleaned, filleted and refrigerated on board, ready for marketing in Hobart. Before the arrival of European settlers, the local Aboriginal population living near the coast depended for much of their food on shellfish such as oysters and abalone. But the real commercial value of abalone was not realised until the 1960s when it was first exported as a gourmet dish to America and Japan. Thank you. 
Abalone diving is a hard, cold, risky job. Once a diver could easily make $1,000 a week collecting abs, but catches are now stabilised at lower levels and divers must work long hours to make a good living. The abalone is actually a large, slow-moving sea snail which clings to rocks and feeds at night on seaweed. It's protected from its enemies by a tough oval shell and the large muscular foot provides the meat of this unusual animal. Over the last 10 years, almost $30 million have been earned from abalone fishing. Many types of shellfish thrive in the cold Tasmanian waters, and the most popular of all is the scallop, which is annually harvested in the north and east of the island. A recent introduction is the Pacific oyster, which is successfully farmed, and attempts are being made to farm mussels and abalone. The near future will also undoubtedly see commercial farming of a wide variety of fish, including flounder and sea trout. No doubt one day we'll also tame the tastiest form of sea life in the Southern Ocean, the Tasmanian rock lobster. Tasmania has long been famous for the size and quality of its rock lobster, known locally as crayfish, and fishing boats loaded with cray pots slowly making their way past sheer cliffs are a familiar sight all around the coast. The crayfish is an antediluvian form of life, remaining unchanged through millions of years of evolution. And there's something alien and prehistoric about this creature with its red shells, spindly legs, spines and feelers. At the moment, cray meat is at a premium and many fishermen find it a lucrative supplement to their income. Stocks of crayfish are closely regulated. Fishery inspectors maintain tight controls on the size of fish. Meanwhile, a few unscrupulous people raid pots in the dead of night and undersized fish are hawked around hotels and restaurants. Further out to sea, Danish seining and otter trawling are harvesting large quantities of fine edible fish. And fish is a nutritious food, rich in protein and vitamins, low in carbohydrates and cholesterol. It can be baked, poached, fried or grilled and can be bought in a variety of forms. 
Whole, cleaned and filleted, skinned and boned, frozen, packaged, crumbed and battered. This time round, Wayne Baker has caught a large quantity of flathead, gummy shark, moor wong and latchet. He'll also find trevally sole and flounder among the catch. Tasmania is surrounded by the sea. It's our last and perhaps our greatest resource. In the future, it will be a major source of protein, and we can't even begin to guess what riches in oil and minerals lie at the bottom of the deep blue sea. It's our next challenge, the last frontier. <laughs>